Abingdon, on the River Thames, the MG Car Factory. From these drawing boards over the years have come one model after another of a world-famous family of sports cars. Right now, the draftsmen are working on a very special job, that of designing the fastest one and a half litre car in the world. A car tailor-made to fit one of the fastest drivers in the world, Sterling Moss. It's no new problem for the Abingdon experts, for MGs have been breaking international class records for the past 27 years. In fact, one of the one and a half litre class F records this car is going to tackle, the Flying Mile, was set up by an MG in 1939 and has remained unbroken ever since. Even though the one and a half litre engine was for seven years the standard Grand Prix formula. Basically, the engine of this new MG Special is the British Motor Corporation's B-Series power unit as fitted to numerous models of the current BMC range of cars. The target is four miles a minute, 20% above the existing record, and to get that out of a one and a half litre engine means some pretty revolutionary thinking about body design and streamlining. From the fact that the driving position has been shifted right forward into the nose of the car in front of the engine, you can see that the designers have been very revolutionary indeed. former MG record breakers had a more or less orthodox chassis with a streamlined skin wrapped round it to the best advantage. This time the approach is reversed. The body shape has been determined primarily by aerodynamic requirements and the layout of the machinery, not to mention Sterling Moss, has been planned to fit the shell. Wind tunnel tests favoured two possible basic shapes, the classic torpedo of circular cross-section and the half torpedo or mobile blister. The problem boiled down to one of distorting the ideal torpedo to the minimum extent necessary to enable it to run on four wheels. The final answer was a form of flattened torpedo, a substantial aerofoil both in plan and in side elevation. Sterling Moss arrives for a fitting. The overall height of the car to the top of the driver's cowl is only 38 and a quarter inches and to the top of the main body shell only 30 and 1 8 inches. So the only way to fit the driver in is to put him in a semi-reclining position. Moss climbs into the driving seat to see how it feels. Everything must be perfect. For a fault that would only be a minor discomfort at a mile a minute could be disastrous at four miles a minute. Is there enough elbow room? Moss and the designers discuss the layout point by point. The steering gear is of the rack and pinion type with a light alloy steering wheel attached direct to the steering pinion shaft. The steering wheel folds out of the way to allow Moss to enter and leave the car. While Moss and the experts are discussing the final alterations, here are a few more facts. Apart from the requirements of streamlining, another advantage of having the engine towards the back of the car and the driving position in front, so far in front actually, that the pedals are only an inch or two from the nose, is that the weight is shifted aft to secure adequate traction from the rear wheels. When the single disc brake, which is mounted inboard, is applied, the pedal also operates an air flap which cools the brake. The engine is a four-cylinder overhead valve type with twin camshaft. It is fitted with twin SU carburetors and a Shorrock eccentric vane supercharger. The brake horsepower is approximately 280 at an engine speed of about 7,000 RPM. The body is a 48 thou aluminium alloy sheeting mounted on bulkheads of the same material with a small amount of square steel tube framing, the hole being welded and riveted integrally with the tubular chassis frame. Except that the nose of the body hinges forward to admit the driver and the center top is removable to give access to the engine. A 
Another result of the streamlining is that the rear wheel track is extremely narrow, only 30 and 3 quarter inches. The front wheel track is nearly a foot wider. The wheelbase is 8 feet and the overall length just over 15 feet. Front suspension, independent parallel wishbone with coil springs. Rear suspension, quarter elliptic leaf springs with radius rod control. All of which adds up to as safe and comfortable a record challenger as anyone could wish for. Sterling is well pleased. He has no major criticisms and those he does make are constructive and welcomed. The 1939 flying mile record set up by Lieutenant Colonel Goldie Gardner was on the Autobahn at Dessau in Germany. But at the new speeds which it is hoped to achieve, not even the finest road in the world is really suitable, especially as records up to 10 kilometers are to be tackled at the same time. So after careful consideration, it was decided to make this year's attempt at Bonville, which might have been designed by nature for speed record attempts. Thousands of miles by road and sea, just to drive a few miles on a dried up lake. But if all the hopes of a team of enthusiastic scientists and craftsmen come to fruition, those few miles will make history. And for such a thoroughbred as the MG Special, only one liner will do. Right now, there are a lot of fingernails being bitten to the quick, but there's no need to worry. The dock workers know their job too. morning over Salt Lake City and the long journey is nearly done. Here comes the trailer with the precious load safe and sound. Those fingernails can start growing again. Incidentally, the choice of an American location for the world record attempt means that if all goes well, the MG Special will capture the corresponding American records as well. National titles may be less important than world ones, but all the same, they would be a feather in Britain's cap, in view of the present keen international competition and the importance of the American market to Britain's motor industry. Bonville salt flats are flat, but they have weather in Utah as well, and there's no harm in improving on nature and making them even flatter. No man has a better right to be here than Captain George Iston on the left. It was he who captured MG's first world record 27 years ago. He has broken more records and understands the art better than any man alive. He has held the world's land speed record three times, and each time he won it right here on Bonville Salt Flats. Now the 60-year-old captain is in administrative charge of MG record-breaking activities in America. When the special is ready for testing, he sends an American driver out in her first to make sure she hasn't suffered in any way from the long journey. Meanwhile, at the official timing stand, the electronic timing equipment is being installed and connected up. These sturdy but sensitive instruments have to be, and are, foolproof. For at four miles a minute, a difference of one mile an hour is only about a sixteenth of a second in the mile, and speeds have to be calculated to the nearest hundredth of a mile an hour. No snag so far, now for a run in the other direction.
Captain Eisden and the other officials watch while the car is cleaned up, ready for checking before the actual record attempt. Everything seems to have gone very smoothly. The test driver reports that she handles beautifully and the engine is running just as it should. The mechanics make their final adjustments, cast an expert eye over the chassis and the big moment's almost here. Sterling Moss is ready. Record breaking's a new departure for him, except, of course, Grand Prix lap records, which he breaks with almost monotonous regularity. But he's one of the fastest men in the world when he's surrounded by other cars on a twisting circuit, so given a car that's as near perfect as research and ingenuity can make it, a flat, straight track, and no one else in sight, well, it should be a piece of cake. The officials are in their places. The timing equipment is ready. Conditions are perfect. And Moss is away. And from the moment the MG Special crosses the start line, it's obvious the old records are going to be smashed by a handsome margin. The only question is, by how big a margin? Record attempts, of course, have to be made with two runs in opposite directions, the official speed being the average of the two. This is the first run, and Sterling Moss's maximum speed is well over the four miles a minute mark. Nearing the end of the first run, Now the decisive return run. One by one, the records pile up. One kilometer, 245.64 miles an hour. One mile, 245.11 miles an hour. Five kilometers, 243.08 miles an hour. Five miles, 235.69 miles an hour. and 10 kilometers, 224.70 miles an hour. Five world records, all broken by about 20%, and five American records into the bargain. Veteran record breaker George Eiston applauds the brilliant young man who has maintained the fine tradition that Eiston and the MG experts began when Sterling Moss was a year old baby. A tradition that has been built up by a blend of creative genius and painstaking labor. A tradition which has kept MG cars in the front rank for more than a quarter of a century. Yes, this is a great achievement, but the MG people are already thinking about the next. It's that refusal to be satisfied which makes the name of MG second to none in the world.